to another episode of In the Kitchen with Vincent. Y'all, it is happening. It's happening. It's about to go down in the kitchen today. So y'all, today I'm bringing back a good old oldie, a old goodie. I'm bringing back some one of those childhood favorites that I know you had that a grandma made some type of rendition of. Today we will be making Salisbury steak and mashed potatoes. I'm Already so excited to dig into this. So y'all sit back and relax and thank you for joining another episode of In the Kitchen with Vincent. Alrighty, y'all. So now let's get to seasoning our Salisbury steak so that we can get ready to make them into patties. So just to let you get a run through of what I'm going to be putting into my patties, I have a fourth of a cup of breadcrumbs. And in this little container, I have two tablespoons of ketchup, one tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce, one tablespoon of Dijon mustard. I have one pound of of 93% 73, I mean not 73, 7%, so I'm sorry, 93% lean, 7% fat, ground beef. I have a fourth of a cup of onion and one tablespoon of garlic. And for my seasonings, I have a tablespoon and a half of my favorite Creole seasoning, a half of a tablespoon of brown sugar, a half of a tablespoon of onion powder, a fourth of a tablespoon of black pepper, and a fourth of a tablespoon of salt. So how we wanna get started, you wanna first start by tossing in your seasoning. Just get that all tossed in. And you know, it's just easier to toss it all in and give it a mix. And we're gonna toss in our onion and garlic as well. Let's get the fork, make sure we don't forget any. Alrighty, oh my gosh, the seasonings always kick up and make me wanna sneeze, but I didn't sneeze. Okay, cool. So now we're gonna add that those breadcrumbs in. Ooh, awesome. And now the sauces. Okay, alrighty. So I'm gonna give that a mix, and then once it's all mixed in, we'll be right back. <laughs> alrighty, y'all, so now our patties are all seasoned up and ready to go. I just washed my hands, so now I'm gonna start to form the patties. So with about one pound, I'm gonna try to get about six to eight patties. So I just start, just take a little handful, and I just want it to fit in my palm. A palm size amount should be enough. And I just roll it like that. Yeah, and I have a nice little board here with some saran wrap on it. Alrighty, and once I got a good little ball made, I try to flatten it out so I can start to form that patty shape. And it's gonna, sometimes it breaks up on the edges, so you just wanna fold it out because you don't want your patty to break up like that before it even starts cooking. You want it to be a nice, full, dense patty. And for me, I don't like my patties um, to be really small and thick. I like them to be medium sized and on about the half inch side so that we can make sure that they get nice, crisp edges before they go into the oven. Alrighty, so my patties end up being about the size of your palm there. So once you get your patty about the size of your palm, you can set it aside and you just keep doing that until you run out of meat. So I won't make you sit there and watch me do that, but once we have that, you're gonna meet me by the stove so we can get these searing. Alrighty y'all, so now we got our cast iron set on medium high heat with just a little bit of canola oil to coat and we got our patties ready. So I think our skillet's about hot, hot enough to get our patties in there. So I'm going to add those patties in one by one and we're going to give them a good sear just to make sure that they're brown on both sides and we'll let you see that. And once we're, they're seared enough for you, we'll be right back so you can see what the next step is.
Alrighty, everybody. So my Salisbury steak have just about hit my desired color, and my oven just hit the um 350 that I set it on for when my gravy is prepared, and I put that in the oven. But for right now, I'm going to pull these Salisbury steak out so we can get this gravy started. And it's okay if you pull those hamburger steaks off of there at about medium well and it's a little bit of pink, it's okay because you're going to put it in the oven and it's going to finish cooking off. Awesome. So now that I have those set aside, it's okay to leave some scraps in there and make your gravy taste good. So I'm going to take half a stick of butter and just slide that in there. Melt that down. And people say half a stick of butter. Yes, half a stick of butter. You got to have some flavor to know that it's there, y'all. <laughs> awesome. Alrighty, and as that butter finishes melting down, I have three yellow onions that I've chopped up. And I'm going to add those to the skillet as well. Alright, alright, alright. Alrighty, I'm going to cook those until they're translucent, and once they are, we'll be right back. Alrighty, y'all. So once your onions get to your desired color, I just make sure that they're good and brown. I'm going to go ahead and take about a half of a cup of flour and toss that in and get that a good mix. Make sure that flour is good and incorporated into those onions, y'all, and that butter. And once you got that looking like you want it to look, that's looking about right for me. I'm going to take my beef broth, and I'm going to put about a half a bottle of that beef broth in there. Alrighty. And you're going to give that a simmer until it thickens. And once we got, got that consistency that we're looking for, we'll be right back so you can see what it's looking like. Alrighty, y'all. So my gravy looks like I want it to. So I'm going to begin to season it just a little bit. I'm going to hit it with just a little bit of salt to taste. It's a little bit of salt to taste there. Toss some onion powder in there. I know we got plenty of onion, but I like onion, y'all. <laughs> Alrighty, and just a little bit of black pepper. Want to make sure your gravy is always good and seasoned. Alrighty, and that gravy is beginning to thicken up on me a little fast. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to grab a little water. Just grab about a half of a cup of water there. I'm just going to add about a half a cup of water to that gravy. Just to loosen it up a little bit. Alrighty, y'all. So now my gravy is all ready. So I'm just going to take these hamburger steaks, get all country with it. I'm just going to add them back into this skillet. One by one. Making room for them. Let me move this over here. So get all that meat, all the scraps and everything. Alrighty, and I'm just gonna flip them. Make sure that they're covered in gravy. Oh, that's already starting to look so good, y'all. And we just on the stove top. Cover them up good. Ooh, try not to make a mess. Alrighty, y'all. So now they're looking all good. Let me Set this aside so I can show you what it's looking like. Alrighty. So the oven is preset to 350, so I'm going to throw this in the oven, and we're going to start on those mashed potatoes. 
Alrighty y'all, so now our um, water is starting to boil and I have six potatoes that I've cut up into one inch pieces and I'm going to stick them down in this boiling water. And just to let you know, I salted my water and I also seasoned it with one tablespoon of chicken bouillon seasoning and it's four cups of water I have boiling for these six potatoes. Alrighty y'all. So I'm gonna allow, I'm gonna allow that to simmer for about five to ten minutes, but I around the eight minute mark I'm gonna check the tenderness and once it's tender enough for me to break it with the spoon, um we'll be right back and I can show you what we're gonna do from there. Alrighty y'all, so I think our potatoes are just about ready. Let me check. Yep. Alrighty, so y'all, it took about 15 minutes for them to get to the level of tenderness I'm looking for. So I'm going to reserve about a cup of this water, just in case we need some moisture on the other side of making these mashed potatoes, but we shouldn't. But once I get these potatoes drained, we'll be right back so I can let you know the next steps to getting these mashed potatoes done. Alrighty y'all, so now we got our potatoes all drained aside and I have the pot off heat right now and now I'm going to add a half of a stick of broken up butter. I just broke it up into some small pieces so that it melts easier. I'm going to add a half of a cup of sour cream. And for our seasoning mix, I have a half of a tablespoon of ranch powder, a, a tablespoon of Cajun seasoning, one tablespoon of minced garlic, a half of a tablespoon of pepper, um, just regular um, ground black pepper, and a half of a tablespoon of salt, and one tablespoon of parsley flakes, just for that color. Alrighty. Oh, I gotta make sure I get all of that out. Alrighty. So y'all, I'm gonna take this whisk and I'm just gonna use it to mash my potatoes now. But once I get my potatoes mashed, um, I'm gonna start gradually adding in some milk as well. But I'm gonna let you see that process um, more up close. Alrighty y'all, so this is what my mashed potatoes look like after some time spending mashing them. And this is before I add my milk in. So y'all, you really want to just add milk until it reaches your desired consistency. But I am going to let it simmer. So you want it to be a little more loose than you want your finished product because that milk will cook down. So I'm just going to add it in little by little and mix until... It is mixed in. Watch out because the sides of the pot are still kind of hot. Right, it's still not there. Still a little stiff. A little more. Also, that's looking a little better. Make sure you get those edges and corners too. So you gotta make sure it's actually really incorporated well. Let's see, yeah, we can use some more of that milk. And y'all, I set aside one cup of milk just to see how much I would end up actually using. And I may actually end up using the whole thing. Let's see. Starting to look good. I will go ahead and just use the rest of that milk. So I used the whole cup of milk. And now that I have that going, I'm going to turn my pot just on low, medium low heat, just to let it simmer a little bit and cook down. And for any of those little chunkier pieces that are in that potato, in the mashed potato, since I hand mashed them to smooth out a little bit more. Let's get that going. Awesome. Alrighty, and once those mashed potatoes are done, we'll pull those Sals Salisbury steak out of the oven and then we can give it all a good look see. Alrighty y'all, so my potatoes have just about gotten to the consistency I'm looking for. When you can do a figure eight in there and it's like slow to fill itself, 
and it's not so liquidy, that's about the consistency you want. Awesome, so I can turn that heat off, or you can just let it sit on low if your Salisbury steak is still cooking. But for us, I just got it sitting in that warm oven, so I'm about to take that out, and we're going to see what we're working with. Alrighty, y'all, so now we got our Salisbury steak and mashed potatoes. Y'all, this food is smelling so good, and it was just bringing back so many childhood memories making this meal, and just the smells and the aromas. So I'm not going to be bewilder us i'm not gonna hold us up any longer and i'm gonna dig in so let's get some of these mashed potatoes oh my goodness it looks and smells so good y'all mm, 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 mm. get some of the mashed potatoes and get one of those salisbury steaks put it on top and grab some of that gravy oh my goodness i know you wish you were here to have you some all right let me grab a spoon and then we're gonna give this a taste Alrighty, y'all, I got my spoon, and let's give it a taste. Let's see. Mm. Oh, my. Ooh. Hold on, hold on. Woo! Okay, y'all. Mmm. Mmm, 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 mmm. Y'all, that meat is so tender, and all the flavor and the creaminess of those mashed potatoes, and that gravy and those onions, y'all. I know that this is going to be a new fave for your family if you haven't already got this in your rotation in one recipe or another. But you should give VV's a try. So thank you for tuning in for another episode of In the Kitchen with Vincent. As always, I'm so blessed and honored to have you in my kitchen. And we'll see y'all on the next episode. I got to finish this up because this is too good, y'all. Make no sense. Mm, 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 mm.